These scissors are squeaky. Maybe that's why they're in the shape of a bird. My friends, I am obsessing over Mod Podge. I don't know if you had a chance to catch my last video, but I used Mod Podge to customize a bag so that it would have the two of swords on it. And I have it on this table somewhere. Hold on. Here it is. Okay. So this bag, I put the two of swords and I used Mod Podge and it came out pretty good. I mean, it looks like the image is actually part of the bag. So of course, now the wheels in my brain are spinning, trying to think of what else can I use Mod Podge for? I was shopping and I came across these earrings at Urban Outfitters and I would pass by them and think, eh, I don't know. And they were on clearance. These were like originally $17, but now they're like $4.99. I mean, I had to get them, right? Because every time I saw them, they were right by the register and I thought, they do look Mod Podgeable, if that's a word. And I started thinking, okay, what can I put on these earrings? And I was thinking, you know, what tarot cards can I put there? And then, you know, of course I was concerned a little bit about copyright. And then I thought, wait a minute. What if we put Ms. Pamela Coleman Smith here on a pair of earrings? That would be cool. And especially, you know, we're still in the middle of March. It's Women's History Month. Why not put Pixie on my earrings? So I think, I think that's what we're going to do today. So what we're going to need for this little project is a pair of earrings. And I thought, you know, these were great because they have, you know, they almost look like earring blanks and they they have a big chunk of space to play with. So hopefully these will work. And you know, this is metal. I've never tried using Mod Podge with metal. So I don't know how this is going to turn out. We'll see. We'll see. And, um, I decided to use an image of Pixie on tissue paper. And you're probably thinking, well, okay, where am I gonna get a picture of Pixie on tissue paper? Is this like an Etsy thing? What do I have to do? How am I gonna get that? Well, you know what? You, my friend, can print this out on tissue paper if you have an inkjet printer at home. And if you're not sure how to do that, I actually made a video on it and you can check the link in the info card to take a look on how you too can print on tissue paper. So, you know, I have some sample cards of Pamela Coleman Smith's artwork. Um, everybody, everybody knows her artwork. I mean, this is from the deck that was published in 1909, the Rider Waite Smith deck. Pamela Coleman Smith was the artist. Her story, it's kind of a little sad simply because she wasn't really recognized for her work. She wasn't paid very well for her work, but you know, now she's kind of coming more into, into the public eye. Um, even though, you know, she passed away, I think sometime in the fifties, but now with all of these editions of the Rider Waite Smith decks coming out and the centennial, um, people are becoming more and more aware of Pamela Coleman Smith. So I'm thinking, yes, we are going to honor this lovely lady and put her on a pair of earrings. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is, let's get these earrings out of here. My $5 earrings. And then I'm going to cut the image and just kind of place it, maybe play around a little bit with the placing and see where it might fit best. I'm just gonna cut the square before I try to attempt to cut out the actual shape of the earring. Just wanna get an idea of placement. Okay, so now I have this tissue paper cut out and I want to make sure that I don't cut her face off. <laughs> so here, let me take this backing off, get it out of the way. Um, so I think once I have an idea, 
I'm going to trace the shape out so that I can cut it. Let's try here. So I'm going to, yeah. All right, so let's put this down. And then I'm going to grab a pencil and start tracing it. OK, so of course I wasn't recording when I cut out the first earring. So this is what the cutout looks like. Um, but I still have one more. So if you want to see how I did it, we can, we can try this again. So what I'm going to do is because I kind of want, I want them to be on opposite sides so that when I'm wearing the earrings, she's showing on the outside. Um, I'm going to do the stencil this way. So let's see how we can get most of her face in there. Okay, I think this is probably the best that we can do. Yeah. So we'll get a little of her forehead cut off. But I think most of her recognizable face will be showing. So let's let's draw this outline. And I'm going to try to make it a little bit darker because I had some trouble seeing the line when I was cutting. Ugh. Did I move it? Ugh, I hope I didn't move it. All right. And I think I'm going to use the little teeny tiny scissors, my little knitting scissors. Look how cute they are. All right. Let's see. All right. So it looks like most of her face is within the earring. So let's try cutting this guy. I better be recording. I think that'll work. All right. So next step is the Mod Podge. I just want to get my tarot cards out of the way. I don't want to get those all Mod Podgy. All right, so I'm going to get my silicone brush, which is great with Mod Podge because once it dries up, you can just peel it right off. It's awesome. So I'm just going to dip a little bit in here and I'm going to get some Mod Podge right on the earring see if this works. I mean, I have no idea. This, this may not work at all, but it's fun to experiment with crafts. Now let's get pixie on the earring. Ooh, gotta be careful that I don't rip the tissue paper. Okay, I'll just try to smooth it out with my fingers. Try to uh, adjust it as best as I can. I keep making all these wrinkles in there. Okay. And then I think what I'm gonna do is maybe grab some glue from here and just fold it over so that I can get the tissue paper to fold around the earring. This is kind of cool because I used a white tissue paper. You can see some of the gold of the earring. I don't know if it'll pick up on camera, but you can see some of the gold of the earring showing through. Get some more Mod Podge on my finger. I feel like using my finger is better than the brush because I have more control and also it's it's tiny, so it's easier to get my finger through these spaces than it is that big old brush. And I'm also a little concerned of smearing some of the ink, but it doesn't seem to be smearing, so I think we're good there. And then when I'm done, I'm going to get some Mod Podge to go over the top 
just to seal it all in and create some kind of a nice finish. I want to get all the edges, curve all those edges in. I mean, it looks pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. The question is, how will this hold up? Again, continuing to use my fingers to press everything down. It almost looks kind of antique again with the gold showing through the tissue paper. It actually looks pretty cool. Let's see if I can bring this closer so you can see that. And these might be some wrinkles in the tissue, but I don't think I mind it that much. It kind of gives it that antique -y look. You know, it's got, it looks a little distressed. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. So what do we think? Are we ready to put that layer of Mod Podge on top? I think so. I mean, so far it looks pretty cool without it. But um, let's, let's get some more. All right, so I'm just gonna brush over it. I'm gonna try to brush it kind of in the same direction if I can. All right. So most of this I brushed vertically. But I guess if you turn it this way, it'll be horizontally when we, you know, turn it upright. Um, is this okay? I don't know. I'm such a noob when it comes to this. But I mean, I'm just so overwhelmed with how, I mean, overwhelmed with joy <laughs> with how that bag came out that I feel like I need to do more. I think I'm gonna let this sit and dry. Okay. Now, hopefully that'll be okay. I was trying to figure out which direction is the best, you know, but uh, uh, let's see how that works out. All right, so I'm gonna put this down here. And we'll wait. So I've let earring number one dry for about a week now. Uh, I believe the cure time for Mod Podge is four weeks. Let me take a look at the bottle here. Yep, cure time, four weeks. So it still has another three weeks to go, but at the moment, you know, it's, it's dry to the touch. I can handle it, it's fine. So let me show you what it looks like up close. I'll try anyway. Um, you'll see when I tilt it toward the light a little bit, you'll see there's some texture there from the Mod Podge. And most of that texture is coming from the silicone brush that I used that it was, you know, a little stiff um, and it left like chunks of Mod Podge in there. So I think what I'm gonna do with earring number two is use this brush that's a little softer, a little smaller, um, and it'll probably still leave some brush strokes, but it probably won't be as, as obvious as this. But you know what? I don't hate it. I think it, you know, it's still pretty cool looking. Another thing that I think I'm going to try differently is instead of brushing horizontally, I think I'm going to do the brush strokes vertically since the earring is elongated and it's longer in height. I think it makes more sense to brush this way. And yes, I realize that the earrings will be different, but I'm okay with that. You know, this is this whole thing is one big giant experiment. So next time if I decide to do something similar with a different pair of earrings, I'll have a better idea of how to handle it. So let's work on earring number two. Let's grab the Mod Podge and I'll probably use the same technique I did last time, which is just to brush on the earring first. Okay. 
Okay, get a little more here. All right. So let's get this lady positioned where we need her to be. And the nice thing about this, of course, is that you can still move it around. It's not gonna dry instantly. But again, because it's tissue paper, you have to be very delicate. And you can't just yank the paper in every which direction. You have to be careful. And there is a mess of Mod Podge back there, but you can kind of just scrape it off once it dries off. So I'm not too concerned. And also it's the back of the earring. Who's gonna see that? <laughs> <laughs> and I probably should have cut this more maybe I still can but I don't want to ruin my scissors by getting Mod Podge all over it well, let's see do I want to cut that okay, I'm gonna fold it over. so what I think I'm going to try to do is use this blade to cut off the excess tissue paper this might work Okay, I think that did the trick. Now let's try it on some of these other areas over here that need a little trimming. Okay. Now, the tricky part is going to be this area right here. Let's see. Let's see if we can get in there. Did we get it? Ooh, yeah. All right. I should have done this with the first earring, but see, these are just the things that we have to learn. We gain experience to make the next thing better. Let's see how we're doing in the front. I love, I love how that sparkles from underneath. Just the way it picks up from, it picks up the gold from the earring. I just love that so much. Now, I don't know, let me look at the one that has Mod Podge on top. Are we still able to see the gold? It's hard to tell with that glare, but yeah, yeah, I guess you do see it. There you go, right? Along the edges, you can see it. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, so now that we have our image nicely placed on our earring, I'm gonna put a coat of Mod Podge. Let's see if we can get it so that the streaks aren't so severe. So I'm gonna go vertically this time. I think I'm gonna just wipe off the edges so that there isn't an accumulation. See how we have a whole bunch of Mod Podge along the edge? I just want to get rid of that because then it'll just create those big bubbles that we saw, not bubbles, but the big, the giant texture <laughs> that we saw on the first earring. So I just wanna smooth that out and see over here, there's a ton of Mod Podge. I don't want that drying up so thick. So I'm gonna try to just get rid of some of that. And now we let it dry. Okay, so I've left earring number two to dry for a couple of hours and it's in a state right now where it's pretty much going to look the same way as it will after four weeks. So I just wanted to do a little comparison so you can see the difference. So this is the first earring that we did with the silicone brush and you can see all of those thick strokes and the globs of dried up Mod Podge that just didn't get smoothed out with that brush. 
this one, I used the smaller, thinner brush. Now, yes, you do see brush strokes, but they're definitely a lot thinner and you don't see any of the, the globs that <laughs> you saw in the first earring. So I definitely think this one came out better. And another reason why this came out better, remember when I, when I used the blade to cut off the excess around the edge? Look at the mess behind the first earring. Oh my God, what is that? Do you see the folded paper on the edge? Yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't do the folding of the paper. What you need to do is trim the excess and look how much cleaner that is. Look, so much better. Don't do the folding. Look at that. Don't, don't do that. Look at this, better. Now there was a lot of um, Mod Podge on the back of this earring. So I just took my nail and kind of just took it off. These scratches were already on the earring. So this is not from me scratching off the Mod Podge. Um, but yeah, you could just scratch it right off and it, and it comes out fine. Definitely second earring, an improvement over the first earring. And also the brush strokes, I definitely like the vertical strokes better than the horizontal strokes. But overall, I mean, it was a fun project, pretty cute. Looking forward to putting on these earrings. And also I did probably wish that I had reversed the image so that she would line up in the same spot in the other earring. But you know, these are, these are things that we are learning. If you were inspired to customize your own tarot themed earrings, please do hit that like button. And if you want to see some other fun tarot related projects that I plan to work on, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if tarot isn't your thing, you can still honor your favorite women of history. A big fan of Frida Kahlo? Throw her on a pair of earrings. Susan B. Anthony, more of your style? Throw her on a pair of earrings. You see a hero in Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Throw RBG on a pair of earrings. Your options are limitless. Happy Women's History Month, everyone. Bye.